Good morning. This is Color Land on the Go with all you need to know news and weather as you start your Sunday. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first, our top story. A member of the South Dakota legislature is speaking out against being suspended from her duties in the state Senate. Republican Julie Fry Mueller held a news conference in front of her constituents in Rapid City Saturday. The Senate voted last week to strip her of her duties following a report detailing a conversation she had with a Legislative Research Council staffer regarding childhood vaccines and breastfeeding. The report alleges inappropriate behavior and harassment, but Fry Mueller says she's being unfairly suspended. I've had all my rights stripped. All of them. So no do so wrong. Yeah. To date, I have still not received any formal written complaint but I look forward to the opportunity to a fair hearing and the opportunity to defend myself against accusations that may be alleged. The South Dakota Freedom Caucus, made up of Republican lawmakers, is echoing Fry Mueller's point about not receiving a written complaint. The Freedom Caucus issued a statement last night calling for Fry Mueller to have her legislative duties restored until the Senate takes action on the matter. The Freedom Caucus says Fry Mueller has not received due process and that her constituents have been deprived of their rightful and chosen representation. The Freedom Caucus says the group does not know whether Fry Mueller is guilty or innocent, but says no evidence of wrongdoing has been publicly made available. Kelloland's Dan Santella will be in Pier tomorrow for team coverage with our Capital News Bureau reporter Bob Mercer as the Senate decides on rules for the committee looking at Fry Mueller's alleged actions. Saturday's snow and wind made for difficult driving conditions across many parts of Kelloland. The South Dakota Highway Patrol posted a picture of a semi rolled over on Interstate 90 west of Kadoka. Troopers had to shut down the eastbound lane until the semi was removed. Well, let's get our first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We are talking about a very cold start to the day out there. You thought yesterday afternoon was cold. Well, at least we were above zero in many locations this time around. That is not the case. Beautiful sunrise, though, across much of the area, including here in Falls Park. But then you look at the thermometer, five degrees below zero with a northwest wind at six miles per hour. Now, that doesn't sound bad, but then you have to take into consideration everybody in Kelloland on the map is sub zero at this morning, including 12 below in Watertown, 11 below in Brookings, 9 below zero in Aberdeen, 7 below zero in Yankton, 4 below zero in Rapid City. And you get the picture. Even Pierre, they were at zero for a little bit, but they now have a minus sign in front of their number. So there's the wind. Again, not bad, 5 to 10 miles per hour. But when you have sub-zero air temperatures, it doesn't take much to put the wind chill in the double digits below zero, including a wind chill of minus 26 in Yankton and in Marshall. It feels like it's minus 27 in Watertown. In Sioux Falls, the wind chill is minus 21. As a result, we have a wind chill advisory in place for just about the entirety of our East River viewing area, going as far west as Mulbridge into Corson County until noon central, 11 a.m. Mountain Time. And it may not be the last time we see this as well. We'll talk about the rest of your seven-day forecast coming up. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. Well, Sioux Falls will be home to more tennis and pickleball courts later this year. The Huther Family Match Point outlined expansion plans on Saturday that will add four new courts to the complex for both tennis and pickleball. The executive director says the $3.6 million project is needed to create more opportunities for people to play and for Sioux Falls to host more tournaments. This is something that we saw coming for a few years, just kind of seeing the increased numbers and participation, uh, both in, in our programming and tournaments, uh, and just the demand that, that was there. The groundbreaking is expected to take place this April with the new courts ready for use in October. The Black Hill Stock Show and Rodeo is taking place at the Monument and the Central States Fairgrounds in Rapid City. Today's activities include a jackpot team roping at 9 a.m. Mountain Time, a Western Arts Show and Sale at 10 o'clock, and the South Dakota Auctioneer Association's bid calling contest at 2 p.m. The stock show runs through February 4th. The Sioux Empire Livestock Show wraps up today at the WH Lion Fairgrounds in Sioux Falls with a collegiate livestock judging contest in the morning. And the 4-H FFA Livestock Judging Contest follows at 1 p.m. The Dakota Southeastern Division of the National Model Railroad Association will be displaying model railroads running along two switching layouts for kids to operate at the downtown Sioux Falls Library. The free event goes from 1 to 3 p.m. 
You only have a few more days to vote for your favorite burger during the downtown burger battle in Sioux Falls. This year's competition features a record 32 burgers for diners to enjoy at downtown restaurants. The burger battle runs through Tuesday. You can catch all the action of the AFC Championship game on Kelloland TV. CBS Sports coverage begins at 5 p.m. Central Time with the NFL Today. That's followed by the Cincinnati Bengals at the Kansas City Chiefs at 5.30. Adam? Well, as I mentioned before, we are going to be dealing with some dangerously cold conditions this morning. There's your wind chill advisory in light blue until noon this afternoon, central time, 11 a.m. Mountain time with wind chill values, especially through the morning, getting as low as and even lower than minus 30 degrees. And like I mentioned before, this likely won't be the last time we see this either. We could have another round of this as we head into the night tonight as it could get even colder than what we're seeing right now. We have a surface area of high pressure that's trying to keep things uh, generally quiet, but we have a couple of snow showers out to the west. Little, if any, accumulation is, is expected out that way, around an inch or less in many locations, on top of the uh, roughly three to six inches they've had in many areas out that way, including six in uh, Rapid City. Now, beyond that, Futurecast really isn't going to have a whole lot to go on. A few rounds of cloud cover now and again, but that's going to be just about all she wrote. As we do get in on a decent bit of sunshine at times, that's going to be good, and it'll help to take the edge off of some of that cold, but not completely, as we are still going to be seeing a lot of that cold air stick around through at least midweek, especially if you're East River. And odds for below average temperatures unfortunately do win out as we head toward Valentine's Day. Though we do get a break by the first weekend of February, I don't think it is going to be permanent. High temperatures today in the single digits above zero in many locations, maybe either side of 10 toward Pier, Phillip, and Rapid City, but that's going to be about as good as it gets. Lows tonight are sub zero and by a wide margin in several areas. Never mind the fact that we are going to likely be dealing with some dangerous wind chills once again. Now, Monday, we do get a split along the river. East River will be on either side of zero in many locations for high temperatures. To the west, we could see low to mid teens and that's going to be just the beginning of the gradual warm-up that we see through the seven day forecast so just keep that in the back of your mind we are going to gradually get an end to this cold it's just going to take a little while have a great day stay warm and stay safe everybody for more on your local news weather and sports you can always head on over to kelloland.com